Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg from Las Vegas. Hank, congratulations. Yesterday, again, 8-2 and two the other day, 3-0 and oh yesterday. Red hot, on fire, can't stop you. I'll tell you something. There's a real uproar in Miami right now, not only on the Dolphins, but on the university. Uh, people there don't understand why the athletic director would have accepted a bid to a game in Yankee Stadium against the team that crushed them last year. Uh, so you see, they, people thought they never should have gone there in the first place. And uh, they're really upset with Mark Ritz now because he, his, he hasn't come up with a quarter. They haven't come up with a quarterback in years. Uh, and uh, the quarterback he played yesterday threw five picks. And uh, they just uh, they weren't into it. Their defense, which was supposed to be so good, uh, you know, of course, the pick set up a lot of those scores. But they put three points up yesterday. Their offense didn't do anything. And, you know, they didn't finish strong this year. They were supposed to be ranked. Remember, they started the season off ranked in the top 15, and they went nowhere. And so uh, the alumni are upset. The board of trustees is upset. They're taking a hard look at that program right now. Where is it going? <laughs> and by the way, they have had 17 players who they recruited who have uh, disenrolled. Oh, really? So I, didn't, the, I didn't know that. So the, pro the, the, program, the program is a mess. Wow. Uh, and, uh, of course, Duke has Duke's quarterback. I think I talked about him before. His name is Jones. Uh, he's going to be the number one quarterback in the draft. Oh, and really? He was tremendous yesterday. He, they, of course, they were playing Temple, who was not a bad team, and he, the Temple got off to a good start. They were leading in the game. He came up in the second half and threw uh, four touchdown passes and, and brought them back. They were behind 27-21, and they won the game 56 to 27. Wow. And he's going to be he's a, the real deal. This quarterback, his name is Jones. Wow, I see where the kid from Oregon decided to stay in school, so that changes yeah. changes things a little bit. Well, we start some uh, there's some conference uh, basketball, college basketball games starting today. It's a smaller smaller uh, conference. Smaller but, ones. There, yeah. There's no big conference games until next week. Right. Uh, well, there's one uh, attractive game on Saturday, and that's Louisville, uh, Kentucky at Louisville. Uh, that's a pretty good matchup. But other than that, uh, uh, there's, there's still uh, big schools playing small schools this weekend. Nothing, nothing really stands out. I agree with that. I mean, you, Liberty's playing UCLA. Maryland's playing Radford. Uh, you know, Wisconsin's playing Western Kentucky. That's not a bad game. Uh, but it's all still, you know, Princeton at Arizona State. So you got to wait a few days before the conference play be uh, begins. Well, it's the final week of the NFL regular season. Some positions are uh, still up for grabs. Mariota practiced yesterday. Uh, and he practiced in front of the media, and he just threw a couple of balls. Um, and he's going to practice again today. And they'll see how he's doing, and that'll determine whether he's going to be able to play again or not against uh, against Indianapolis. Um, and, of course, that's a big game. It's an elimination game, really. It's like a playoff game. So, uh, but uh, it's either him or Gabbard. And uh, frankly, I don't think he's ready. I, think the, the, I mean, the big. I think the big issue. I mean, you got two good coaches, Frank Reich and Rick, you know, Rabel. It's, it's, it's two good coaches going on there. Um, young guys, first year. Quarterback edge definitely is Andrew Luck, but the running issue. Tennessee does run the ball very well, and the running game has really shown up lately, the team that runs the ball the best seems to be winning quite a few games. Well, the uh, the Colts stopped uh, Henry in the game played up there. They held him to less than 50, to less than 50 yards in their game. 
and uh, they, they blew Tennessee out. And they are 10-0 and 0 at Tennessee, so they've got the, a big edge in this game going in. Yeah, that's uh, and then the, uh, the game at Baltimore is a big game. I mean, you know, Cleveland doesn't have a playoff position to play for, but they have been playing very well, and they're kind of fearless. They're kind of a scary team because they really have nothing to lose, and you know they're going to come to play. And Baltimore has everything to play for, and their running game and defense has been absolutely great. Cleveland has a chance to have its first winning season, and uh, I don't know how many years. It's been a long time, but uh, they are, you know, they're a 500 team in this game coming in. And if they win, they finish with a winning year. Uh, nobody would have projected that. And this is uh, their young quarterback who's kind of brash, uh, going up against the top defense. And uh, that's the question, you know, can he hold up against the Baltimore defense? And they, they're going to get on him. You know, Suggs is one of the top pass rushers in the league. And, you know, the, uh, the secondary for the, uh, for the Ravens is very good. Special teams, big edge for the Ravens. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a game where the Ravens are, you know, a, a significant favorite. Uh, and I'm not sure they should be against this team right now. Yeah, it's a, it's a you know, boy, I tell you, the way the way the, uh, both of these teams have been playing lately, you would look at this and say, well, maybe it's a three, three and a half point line, but there's a six out there, and that's a big number. You know, the, the teams that need to win, the odds makers really jack up the prices. They get very expensive, and um, I'm not sure that that's always justified. Because some of these, you know, even though they're not playing for playoff position, these guys are all playing for their jobs. Well, remember that the, uh, the, they jacked up the uh, the numbers on on salaries for next year too. So they're playing for money, not just for jobs. <laughs> and money matters, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I know that, you know, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you're busy. Uh, but there, there are the big races tomorrow. I know you said you uh, are going to be looking at those. and, and uh, Yeah, there's uh, four stakes races at Santa Anita. Uh, opening day, uh, they had uh, some stakes races. And uh, one of them was run uh, by a uh, stakes race. The Malibu stakes was won by McKinsey, who was trained by Bob Bafford, who was one of the top three-year-olds last year. And Baffert uh, immediately declared that McKenzie would probably go into Pegasus State. So, and that uh, will be uh, contested uh, in, uh, towards the, the end of January at uh, Gulfstream. Uh, also, uh, uh, the Orange Bowl game on Saturday, I just wanted to point something out. I was talking with uh, somebody yesterday uh, who told me that Alabama didn't buy a lot of tickets for this game. Uh, they, they aren't showing up. Uh, and the Orange Bowl committee is very disappointed that they may not have much of a crowd as they expected for an Alabama uh, matchup uh, <coughs> against Oklahoma. Uh, and the reason that they think that Alabama is not going to come in and buy tickets, and they've turned back a lot of tickets, and they're Okay, they're selling tickets for the Orange Bowl game for like a hundred bucks, which is a real bargain. Uh, is the, 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 the kind of desperate? Is because Alabama supporters figure that they're going to win this game, and they're using their money to go to San Francisco in two weeks for a championship game. Well, <clears throat> wow. Well, I guess with the, a point spread of 14, 14 and a half, I guess they have a right to think that way. And maybe they can't afford to go to both, and if they can choose to go to one, they'd rather go to the game that might be against, uh, well, it's going to be against Clemson or, or Notre Dame, most likely Clemson. But <clears throat> I guess uh, finances determine that they can only afford one. That, that's kind of surprising. But I actually know someone that goes to Alabama, and they're doing exactly the same thing. They're going to watch the game 
here in Las Vegas this week and then go to the championship game should they, I mean, Alabama should make it, you would think. And that, that's what their plan is because they couldn't, exactly the same reason, they couldn't afford to go to both. Well, you know, the, uh, the hotel rates in, in Miami are jacked up for this event. Uh, much like a Super Bowl. And so uh, the hotels are not getting uh, the business that they thought they were going to get. And it's, uh, uh, and you know, Miami right now is uh, sports wise, uh, the, the uh, sports public is very upset. They're upset with the Dolphins, they're upset with the university, uh, they're not happy with the heat right now. Uh, and uh, their hockey team is not all that great. Uh, and the baseball team is a disaster. Uh, so sports in Miami right now is in a real funk. Wow. I got out of there just in time. <laughs> yes, you did. It's starting to sound like the uh, Cleveland, the city of Cleveland for the past 50 years. Right? <laughs> but they're turning it around, so <laughs> now it's Miami's turn. Wow. Well, you know, some of the University of Miami basketball is a disappointment this year, too. Uh, they thought they were going to be good, and uh, they had a couple of injuries, and uh, they're not the team that they thought they were going to be. They got beat by two Ivy League teams this year. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a real complete disaster sports-wise. And the newspapers this week, Friday's Miami Herald came out with the possibility that the coach, Gates, may not be renewed. And uh, they, they also uh, said that uh, Tannenbaum was probably gone, and uh, they had a list of uh, possibilities to replace him, one of which was Dan Marino. And <laughs> I believe football writer said that uh, uh, Marino's uh, name has been tossed around. That come, came from my story on Sportsline, and he's kind of dismissed it. He better not so fast, my friend. Marino is a serious consideration to take over the Dolphins' management. Would be that would would that be his management or head coach? No, Marino's not going to coach. Okay. No, he he'd be taking over the same job Elway has in Denver. I got you. I think I told you this on Wednesday. I think you did mention that. And what is Elway going to do in Denver? What do you think? I mean, I know you don't know exactly. Hey, the coach, I do know. The coach is gone. Any uh, likely candidate to fill it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, there, there are guys that are already uh, interviewing for the job in Cleveland. I guess I saw that. Why wouldn't uh, Why wouldn't Cleveland keep the same guy they got right now? He's doing uh, well. They They may. They may. It's a, it, they are doing pretty well at the moment. That's for sure. Well, they, I don't blame them for starting the search already. There are guys out there who are available uh, who, who aren't too bad. You know, Aaron might be a candidate. Well, he, he uh, said the only job he would take would be Cleveland. He said that. And but the old coach for Indianapolis, uh, uh, he's, uh, he's a candidate. Oh, well, Pagano. Yeah, Pagano. You got Caldwell... Who they replaced in Detroit? Yeah, uh, called was another guy who's a candidate. And they sure are, they sure didn't make a good move there. I mean, he was doing a whole lot better than Patricia. I mean, that that's been a disaster. But it's well, um, in, in, in Patricia's uh, case, uh, he had them uh, playing decently there for a few weeks, uh, for two or three weeks. And all these guys got hurt. You know, everybody they had got hurt. You know, they're down to one healthy running back, no healthy wide receivers. Uh, their secondary was decimated by injuries. They just had one of those years where there wasn't much you could do about it. I'm surprised they're still marching Stafford out there to get beat up. You know, because uh, he's a high-priced guy with a lot of talent. and he's, he's playing in games that are meaningless at the moment. Yeah. Anything now? Uh, uh, Dallas will uh, play the Giants uh, two years ago when they had wrapped up uh, the division. Uh, they played their regulars for one series, and uh, and 
They sat him the rest of the game. And uh, Gurley is, uh, I don't think, going to be able to play this week. He's uh, still hurting. He hasn't been able to practice yet. And they'll save him for the playoffs. So, although they signed Anderson from Denver, and he ran for 160 yards last week. Yeah. Of course, it was against Arizona. Uh, but that's, the, that's about it. Well, last year, McVay uh, held the players out in the last game, and they... And they lost to San Francisco, and he said this year he's not going to do the same thing. He's going to put more intensity into it. But it is, you're right, Gurley is very likely not going to play. Um, there's going to be a lot of changes, Hank. I don't know. What, what do you think? About eight head coaches changing jobs this year in the NFL after the season? Uh, well, uh, I think, uh, let's see, uh, Arizona. Uh, Denver, uh, Pittsburgh is a good question. What's going to happen there? He may be in trouble. Cincinnati, uh, Miami, uh, Tampa Bay. Well, Green Jacksonville, Jacksonville will probably stick with their guy another year. Green Bay is going to have a change. Green Bay, Green Green Bay. Green Bay is the team that's been interviewing, not Cleveland. I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. Okay. Uh, and uh, let's see, who have I missed? Uh, the Jets? Yeah, that's right, the Jets. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, I think that's it. That's a, that's a lot. There, you, you got eight or nine in there. And then, of course, you know, and people don't talk too much about the changes at offensive and defensive coordinator positions, but many times they are very, very critical. We have seen teams really change dramatically by the loss of a, or, or you know, the, the addition of a very talented offensive or, or defensive coordinator. And no, and people don't well, talk about I, I it enough. I think the Atlanta offensive coordinator is going to be gone. I think Sharkeesian is going to be out. And I would agree that that's probably necessary. He just hasn't produced with all that talent. Now, of course, that talent is getting older now. It's, it's going to start moving on. But two years ago, the leading t scoring team in the in the country, and then down to what they are now. Well, actually, they played well towards the end of this season. When when they're totally out of it and they have nothing to play for, they play better. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, they, they've gotten healthy uh, on uh, defense a little bit. That's, uh, that's what's helped them because their defense was what was killed them this year. Actually, their offense never really played that bad. Uh, but they got all those uh, injuries on defense, and, uh, they, you know, they couldn't have score anybody. But it, it wasn't all Sarkeesian's fault this year. We didn't, we didn't, uh, but, we didn't, mention, we didn't mention Carolina. We, you think uh, Ron Rivera is going to be gone? No, no, he's he's coming back, and uh, of course he has to replace uh, the defensive staff. Yeah, and he's got a problem at quarterback. If Cam can't stay healthy, he's not playing this week, of course. But uh, he said some. Injuries. He's not playing, and neither is the second string guy. They just signed somebody. Somebody off the street, huh? Yeah. Wow. Well, that, Hank, I know we're running long, so I don't know if you have anything you want to add before we close off. No. Okay. Got it all in. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about the uh, uh, Saturday, of course, the two uh, college championship game series. And, uh, you know, Michigan's got a good game, too, against Florida. But, uh, you know, you got Alabama against Oklahoma. Oklahoma is kind of like Kansas City in the NFL. The defense is not very good, and you got the number. This is a rare, rare matchup where you've got the uh, number one and number two Heisman uh, finishers going against each other, the two quarterbacks, and then uh, Notre Dame against uh, uh, Notre Dame against Clemson, and Clemson's best defender is not going to play. He's suspended, and uh, he failed the drug test and. Uh, and that, that could be a good competitive game. So uh, I'm looking forward to those two football games on Saturday. 
Well, yeah, they're going to be great to watch. I'll definitely be watching those. Everybody will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah everybody will. Alabama, they'll start scoring. I, I'm going to give you one tip, and that is that I know this for a fact. The saving strategy against Oklahoma is to score early on them. They're going to come out firing. So you may want to look at a first-half number in that game. Well, that's a good tip. Excellent tip. And I have one, too. I haven't discussed this with you, but at least I don't think I have. I think that there's one team in the NFL, in the NFC, that is playing very well. The team has flaws, no question about it, especially on the defense against the pass. I'm talking about the Seattle Seahawks, and I mentioned this the other day, that at 33-1 to to win the Super Bowl and 15-1 to to win the... NFC, I think Seattle is a great value play. Now, I'm not saying they they will win. I'm saying I think they're way overpriced, underrated, and they could sneak in there. It's a possibility. And I I made a bet on both both spots. Well, I bet on Chicago, and I was able to get 11 to 1. And if uh, things break white, right for them, they actually could wind up with a first round buy. Uh, although they would have to depend on San Francisco to beat the Rams this week, which is a possibility. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, as, far as, uh, as far as Seattle is concerned, they just struggled on the road this year. They've been uh, pretty good at home, real good at home. But they've got the right formula. They've got the good running game, and they've got the good quarterback. Uh, and uh, they've got some offensive line issues but they're playing a little bit better there. And Pete Carroll, is a, he's a good candidate for coach of the year for the job he's done there. Yeah, he's done a, a fantastic job. Hank, I want to wish you uh, a happy new year. I know that, you know, we'll talk next week, of course, but and everybody out there, a happy new year. 2019, I hope, brings everybody a lot of great health and prosperity. And I want to thank everybody for listening to our podcast throughout this year. And, and hope you enjoyed the success that Hank has brought you because he's been red hot all all season. If you'd like to get Hank's plays, go to jimfeist.com. He'll have basketball, football, horses, everything you can imagine up there because Hank stays on top of it. So with that, I'll close off and say, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, Hank. And to you, Jim. Thank you.